Alright, so I was thinking about things that I want to learn about. And one thing that I've been meaning to learn about for a while, but haven't really had an opportunity to really dive into, is probability theory. So I was like, okay, let's find a probability theory and start wor working through exercises in that. And hopefully this won't turn into... I've had a couple playlists where I do, like, one day I'm like, hey, I want to learn about this topic, and then I'll take a textbook and I'll start doing exercises in it, and then I'll get bored of it, and then move on and do something else, and just end up with a playlist of five to ten videos, um, which doesn't really give a comprehensive, like, overview. I guess, I guess it's not really helpful to have a really small playlist. So hopefully that won't happen here, but we'll see what happens. But anyways, we've got this exercise, and our space is going to be the set of real numbers, and f is all subsets which are either countable or have countable complements. And then we have a function which assigns to each countable set 0 and to each set with countable complement 1. And we want to prove that this is a probability space. So what does this mean? We must prove that f is a sigma algebra or sigma field and that p, first of all it has to map from f to the interval from 0 to 1. We have to prove that it is a measure. So to prove f is a sigma algebra, let a be an element of f. We have to prove that a complement is also an f. So if a is countable, then a, which is a complement complement, is countable. So a complement is in f. And the reason that a complement is in f is that the complement of a complement is countable. And that's part of the condition for being, or that's one of the possible conditions for being in the sigma algebra. All right, so, um, so suppose it's not the case that A is countable. If A complement is countable, well then, well then we know that A complement is in F because because yeah that's where the definition if all F if any set which any subset of R which is countable is in F so if a complement is countable then it's automatically in F so thus if a is in F then a complement is in F. Do I have to talk about the empty set here? I forget. Let me think about this. Suppose you prove that... Yeah, I think you technically have to prove that the empty set is... I think that's another assumption that you have to prove. I'm not... I don't, I don't think it's implied by oh wait wait well maybe it is um if you have a countable collection then its union must be in the set so you know just in case let's prove it the empty set is countable because the number of elements in the empty set is zero, which is countable. So the empty set is in F. 
Okay, and then lastly, we need um, that we need closure under countable unions. So let a i where i belongs to some indexing set alpha, where alpha here is some countable indexing set. Let this be a countable subset of F. So it is a, a countable collection of elements of F. Okay, now let A be the union over all I in this, in this um, indexing set alpha of AI. So let this yeah, so let, so let A be this union. If each AI is countable, then so is A, which means that A is an element of F. If AJ is not countable for some j, then what do we know? Well, this means that a j complement must be countable. Now let's look at a complement. A complement is the union over all i. I won't I won't write over all i in alpha. I'll just use union over all i, just like the textbook uses. So I sort of like that because the indexing set is sort of implied. Um, so let this be a union of these. So this is what the a complement literally is, and then we use uh, what is this De Morgan? Um, yeah, this is just a set theory thing, and you can prove this if you want. It's pretty elementary, actually. Actually, um, It's sort of just by the definition, but you can prove it if, you're, um, if it's not automatic. But yeah, so these two sets are the same thing, the complement of the union and the intersection of the complements. And this intersection here, this is a subset of a J complement because that's one of the sets that we're intersecting, o intersecting over. So a complement is countable because it's a subset of a countable set. And so A is in F. And thus, A is guaranteed to be in F regardless of whether um, all the AIs are countable or some AJ is not countable. Okay, so that's all we need. So, so that confirms that F is closed under countable unions and half, hence F is a sigma algebra. Okay, so that's the first part of this exercise. And then the last part is to prove that P is a measure. Well, that P is a measure which maps to zero, one. As for P, since P of A um, is going to be either zero or one, for any element A of our sigma algebra. This is because we know that this function P, it's zero if A is countable and one if the complement of A is countable. So that means that the only possible values of th that this function can take are zero and one. So this tells us that P maps from f to the closed interval from 0 to 1. And it also tells us that p of a is greater than or equal to 0 for all 
A in F. Since the empty set is countable, P of the empty set equals zero. All right, so there we go. So that's almost everything. Um, the only other thing we need is, um, was it countable additivity? So lastly, suppose AI is a countable disjoint subset of F. And let A be the union over all I of AI. And by the way, this is, let's see, I think the textbook uses this notation. They use a giant plus sign for disjoint unions. Okay. So if all AIs are countable, then so is A. And so in this case, P of A equals zero. But then this is also the sum over all the I's of P A. You know, since these are sums from one to from, since these are countable collections, I guess we can put the a collection from i equals one to infinity. It's not really super necessary, although maybe it is. Well, well, it's not necessary, but maybe it would be nice. I might, I might do that for other exercises. But anyways, so, anyways, um, p of a is zero, but that's also the sum of the of the of PAI because PAI is zero for every I, so you're just adding zero infinitely many times, which gives you zero. So suppose sum AJ is not countable. Then AJ complement is countable. Now this is this is the interesting part of this problem, or one of the inter one of the more interesting parts of this problem. Since AI is a disjoint collection, if we consider this um, collection of all AI such that I is not equal to J, these must be contained in AJ complement. Or rather, I, I, I guess this isn't correct notation. I think I should, uh, it'd be better to say AI is contained in AJ complement for all I not equal to J. Because if it were not the case that each AI were contained in AJ complement, then that would imply that AI intersects with AJ, which is not allowed because these sets all need to be disjoint. So AI is a subset of a countable set. So AI is countable if I is not equal to J. So then, look at this. The sum of all of the PAIs, well, we get P of AJ plus the sum overall i not equal to j of p a i and p of a j well a j is a set whose complement is countable so that's one and then if we look at the sum overall i not equal to j of p a i well all the a i's are countable because we're not allowing the index i to equal the index j and so this means that um all of these PAIs are zero, and so this sum is zero. So this is just one. And since A is the union
So, and then this is equal to PA, where the final quality holds since the probability of A. So 1 is the probability of the entire space R, which is greater than the probability of A. Oh, no, 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 we can't use this. I cannot use the fact. What I wanted to do is I want to use the fact that the fact that A is a subset of R implies that P of A is less than or equal to P of R. But I can't do that because that's something which follows, that that's something that you know if you're given a measure. But we're establishing that is a measure, so we can't use that yet. Yeah, that's, that's not, it's not okay. Okay. So why does the final equality hold? It holds because um, a complement, well, similar to before, a complement is going to be a subset of a j complement is countable. So the fact that um, a is the union of the AIs, which is the... So A complement is the complement of the union of the AIs, which is the intersection of the complements of the AIs, which is a subset of a J complement. And so A complement is a subset of a J complement, and we know a J complement is countable, and so A complement is countable, and we know that P of A is 1 whenever the complement of A is countable, and so that's how we get the final equality. And hence, we have that omega, which here is R, F, and P, is a probability space. So yeah, in my opinion, well, I mean, I've also taken courses in measure theory before, so I've seen this stuff before, so... I'm sort of used to this, so it, I don't find this too difficult, but this is sort of like how some of the measure theory exercises, at least at first, tend to go. Um, it seems a little weird at first, and the definition seems seem a little odd, but for something like this, all you have to do is you have to go through this checklist of things that you need to check, and sometimes they're pretty difficult to check, but in this example, this is one of the easier examples. Um, but it's more just knowing whenever you see check that something is a measurable space, you've got like a whole list of things that you have to check. You have to check, okay, well, this needs to be a sigma algebra, and that has its own checklist. And then you've got to have this as a measure, and that has its own checklist. And then it's also got to be a probability um, measure, because measures are more general. Um, if you don't res if you don't force p to map f into the closed interval from zero to one, if you let p to map, if you allow p to map f into um, all all real numbers greater than or equal to zero, then you end up with um, the standard definition of a measure, which you learn about if you learn about measure theory. Um, and in this case. A lot of the things end up being the same, but um, in any case, in this example, there's just one other thing that you need to check, which is that it maps sets into the closed interval from 0 to 1, which it does in this case. And so, yeah, all you have to do is check the things, and then you're done with the exercise.